Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am a furniture painter and refinisher. So I'm usually taking stuff from around my house or things that I find on the cheap through Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and I'm making them over. Today I'm gonna be making over some lamps that we've had for a really long time and just giving them a fresh look. I'm gonna be using some Dixie Belle products from their patina line. Paint actually looks like metal, so I'm gonna paint this a black iron color and then use the spray that they have to kind of age it and rust it a little bit. These products were provided to me by Dixie Bell, but this video is not sponsored. All of the thoughts and opinions in this video are mine 100%. If this is your first time here, please think about subscribing before you leave and make sure you hit that bell notification so you'll be notified anytime one of my videos goes live. Also follow me on Instagram at pretty underscore distressed and you'll see a lot of the behind the scenes of my videos and my projects before they go live here on YouTube. So if you wanna see how I got this look using the Dixie Belle Patina paint line, just keep watching. I'm working with this Dixie Belle Patina paint today, and the idea behind this is that they're all metal finishes, so they have three colors, copper, bronze, and the one I'm gonna be working with today, which is iron. Um, so they have like a metal finish to them. They also, it also comes with a primer that um, I'm gonna use first to get this to stick and to make everything work because you have these sprays, a blue and a green spray that actually react with the metal paint and then give you kind of that distressed old age look. So the blue one is for um, the copper and the bronze, I think. And then the green one is for the iron. So these are the two that I'm gonna be using today. So it says it can be applied to metal surfaces, resin casings, and glossy plastic. It's tough, durable, water-based, and has no VOCs prevents rusting throughout your metal creation um, using the patina paints and the sprays. Um, and it's not necessary on non-metal pieces. So if you have um, like a frame or something you're wanting to redo and it's wood, you can just paint um, the actual paint right on top and you don't have to use the primer, but this for any metal, um, you're gonna wanna use the primer. All right, well, I was thinking I was gonna paint this right on, but now I'm reading the directions on the primer that says uh, you need to clean metal first with a good quality metal cleaner or degreaser and then sand if possible. Sanding's not required, but may help end results. Normally, I would just go and slap this on after dusting this. That's normally how I roll, but I wanna give you guys a full cr critique of this. So I'm actually gonna follow the, the directions that tell you how to get a better finish. I just grabbed like a multi-purpose cleaner I have. This is a Windex one. Um, I think it's gonna do the trick because this is not really dirty. Um, if you decide not to clean it though, at least um, wipe all the dust off because dust um, makes, you know, does not helpful when you're trying to get a primer or paint to stick to something. Okay, and now I am gonna take some just sandpaper I had on hand. This is 150. I would do a medium grit like that. You could do a coarse too if that's all you have. So anywhere from like 80 um, to like 150 I think would be okay. I just grabbed a brush that I have and I'm gonna get all that dust out of these crevices. And then I'm gonna go um, over that with a tack cloth too and just make sure I don't have any dust residue. And then you can clean it one more time if you want. I think that's what this paint says, but it, this is looking shiny and clean to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into the primer paint. Okay, so this is water-based. So I'm just using um, just a paintbrush that I have. I use this to chalk paint sometimes, um, but it's not one of my favorite brushes. So I'm gonna use this one, but I should be able to clean everything up with soap and water. So you can use any type of brush you want. I don't think it matters if you have natural bristles, but this is natural bristle. So I'm shaking this up. So I'm just gonna dip it in here, start painting it on. Does this say low VOCs? It says no VOCs. It's kind of got an odor though. So I'm gonna pause for a second and open my windows. If you wanna use a mask, do that. Like the more protection you have, the better off you are. Um, you can wear gloves and all that. Okay, so I opened the window to get a little bit more ventilation going here. So it does have a pretty um, strong smell, a lot stronger smell than, than um, the like chalk paint, but it does say that it has no VOCs. It's covering pretty well, um, but they do recommend doing two coats. Wouldn't it be funny if I left it this color? <laughs> it's pretty intense. 
Oh, this reminds me of my carpet in my bedroom growing up. And I had hunter green wallpaper. Girl, this was popular color in the 70s. Okay, so the directions say to apply two layers, so I'm gonna let this dry for one to two hours. It also says that I can clean this up with soap and water, but since I'm gonna do a second coat, I'm just gonna stick this guy in a Ziploc bag, like I always do, to save it and keep that paint wet so I don't have to clean out my brushes in between coats. Okay, so it's been about an hour and 38 minutes, and my uh, first coat is dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the prime start and do a second coat. Okay, so the second coat is all on, so I'm gonna let this dry, and the next step will be painting on the iron paint. Okay, so this says the patina paint is ground metal in a non-toxic water-based acrylic binder. And it can be used on metal or non-metal, um, but that you do have to use the primer with the metal. Okay, I'm gonna shake this up, and then I will zoom you in for the painting. Okay, so we're on day two here, and the coat, the first coat, it's not covering that much. So I'm gonna do a little bit different of a technique. I read um, up on some people using this and watched some videos last night, so I'm gonna try to stipple it on here. So this is coat two of the iron, and depending on the coverage I get, we're gonna do the spray next um, to antique it. So I'm actually gonna get Stipple it and give it some texture. Okay, so I am liking the way that this is looking, but I can see a lot of that primer still coming through. So at this point you could do the spray, um, distressing the, the patina spray to kind of rest it up. I'm thinking that I wanna do at least one more coat before I try that, because I just feel like if I do it right now, um, I'm not gonna be happy with it. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come back for a third coat in just a little bit. So I'm gonna shake this up again and I'm gonna do the same stippling motion. I like the way that that's looking and covering. So that's what I'm gonna do on this coat as well. Okay, my third coat is complete. I'm happy with the coverage at this point. So I am now gonna do the patina spray. You can spray, brush, or sponge it on. It comes with this little spray bottle, so I'm gonna try that. Um, I am gonna wear goggles, a mask, as well as gloves. Did I say that? Goggles, mask, gloves, yes. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna rust on the iron, um, and it says the reaction takes two to six hours to work. So we're just gonna spray it on, and then it's gonna be the waiting game again, and we'll come back and see what it looks like. So these are nitrile gloves. These are heavy duty ones. I did get disposable ones just because it's so much easier to throw them out. Okay, so this says to shake well, so I'm gonna shake it well. Here you go. Oh, it's a big drip. I kinda want it more. Oh, hmm. Okay, I was thinking that this was gonna mist out, but it's definitely streaming. So I'm gonna try to close it a little bit more and see what that does. Oh, there, that's better. So I'm just closing the stream a little bit more. And so, yeah, so I don't get those drips. I don't know how, what this is gonna do, so I'm scared, I don't know how much to put on. Um, but, ooh, it's already like doing something. Okay, I'm just kind of being haphazard with it. I guess we'll just let this sit for like a couple hours, two to six hours, as I said. I'll just kind of keep checking in and show you guys what we're looking like, but I'm hopeful. It's looking cool. Okay, so this is what it looks like after um, this has been dry for about two days. So I'm really liking the way that this area is looking and right here, but I do not like uh, what happened when I had the stream too strong with these drip marks. So I'm gonna go back over and paint this area and kind of cover up those uh, streaks and then spray the patina again and see if I can get more of like this look on here as opposed to um, these drip marks down here. I got all my protective gear on. I'm gonna shake this up and spray those areas that I just painted. So 
So this project is finally complete. Here is what my lamps look like before and here they are after. My final thoughts on this paint is I really enjoyed it. It was so much fun to work with. It's almost like a science experiment and I can already think of tons of things that I wanna use it for around the house. If you guys wanna buy it, I will leave um, a link below to all the products that I use today. And my Dixie Bell link is an affiliate link. I really appreciate it if you do use my affiliate link. I will get a small commission and it just helps keep this channel running and helps me bring you guys more content and more videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment below or send me any questions that you have about the product. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.